basics of java programming it has a sub concept evolution of a java we can also called as java history a java is general purpose object oriented programming language developed by the sun micro system of usa in 1991 java is originally called as o it is developed by the scientist name james gosling java was invented for the development of a software consumer electronic devices like tv toaster washing machine fridge etc the main aim had to make a java is very simple portable and also the reliable so this is brief history about the java so java has a some of the milestones so that the some important milestones in the development of a java some of the years like 1990 to and uh, the 2004 in 1990 the sun micro system has decided to develop a software that could be used for a consumer electronic devices it is a project named as a the green project it is headed by the scientist called james gosling in 1991 the exposed possibilities of the c++ with has some of the updates announced a new language named as a the o in 1992 demonstrate a new language to control a list of a home appliances the whole team is verified the applications of the new language to manage a list of home appliances using the some of the hand held devices in 1993 the world wide web appeared on the internet and transformed the text based environment into as an the graphical based environment in 1994 the team developed a new web browser that we can call it as a hot java this hot java is used to locate and run applets the applets are the small java programs that is run on the web browser in 1994 we are used the web browser called as a the hot java in 1995 the oak was renamed as a the java many companies such as netscap and microsoft announced their support for a java in 1996 the java became the language for the internet programming and general purpose object oriented programming language in 1997 the sun micro system has released the java development kit that means jdk 1.1 version in 1998 sun micro system is released the java 2 with the versions of 1.2 version of a software development kit that means sdk 1.2 in 1999 the two platforms were released j2se and also j2ee means j2 standard edition and J2 Enterprises Edition. In 2000, Sun Micro System is released. The J2 SE with the SDK 1.3 version was released. In 2002, J2 SE with the SDK 1.4 version was released. At last, the 2004, the J2 SE with the JDK 5.0 was released. Nowadays, we were using. the many versions like an the jdk 6.0 6.1 6.2 7.1 8.1 and 8.1 etc so these are all the some of the important milestones in the develop, development of a java then we move on to the next slide the features of a java this is a very important the some of the features of a java like compiled and interpreted platform independent and portable object oriented robust and secure distributed familiar simple and small multi threaded interactive high performance 
dynamic and extensible first let me know about compiled and interpreted so what is a compiled and what is a interpreted so basically many computer languages like c c++ that are all either it is compiled or it is interpreted but java comes together both these approaches like the compiled and also the interpreted the java compiler it translates the java code into the bytecode instructions but the java interpreter it accepts the bytecode then it is translated into a the machine code this can be directly executed by the machine that is running the java program so that java has a two approaches like compiled and also interpreted then go to the next second feature platform independent and portable independent which means that it does not dependent on any hardware and portable means that very small this can be easily move from the one computer to another computer system so that the java it support the features of any portability java programs can be easily move from the one computer system to another computer system and anywhere so that we can call it as a portability java certifies the portability in two ways like java compiler generates the bytecode instructions that can be directly is executed on the any machines in the second way size of primitive data types or independent so that it does not dependent on the any machines so that that property we can call it as a platform independent then go to the third feature object oriented already we know the concept of java it is a the truly object oriented programming language the java it has a many object oriented concepts like class object encapsulation abstraction dynamic binding polymorphism etc in the java almost everything it is an object because a program can be divided into the number of sectors in the object oriented concept that all we can call it as an object so that in the java almost everything it is an object all the program code and data exist in the objects and also the classes then go to the next feature robust and secure java is a most strong language which provides many securities to make a certain reliable code a java includes the concept of exception handling which means that which retains the serious errors and reduces all the kind of a threats of crashing the system so this is we can call it as a exception handling that security security it is a very important feature of an java and this is a strong reason that the programmer use this language for a programming on the internet so that this is a very important feature in the java robust and secure then go to the next feature is distributed a java it is an a distributed language for the construct construct applications on the network so which can contribute both java data and programs a java applications can open and access the remote objects on the internet easily that means the multiple programmers at a multiple remote locations to work together on the single task so this is we can call it as the java it is an the distributed language then go to the next feature is simple and small a java is an the very simple and small language because the java does not use a pointer java does not use a header files java does not use a go to statements etc so that java is also eliminates the concepts of an operator overloading and also multiple inheritance so that java it is on a very small and simple language then go to the next feature is multi threaded and interactive what is a multi threading a thread is a the single flow of control multi thread means that multiple flow of control can run simultaneously which means that 
multi-threaded means managing a multiple task simultaneously. Java maintains the multi-threaded programs. That means we need not wait for an application to complete a one task before starting a next task. This feature is very helpful for a graphic applications. Then go to the next feature is high performance. Java performance is very extraordinary for an interpreted language, majorly due to the use of an intermediate bytecode. Because a Java performance is that very the Java performance is that a very extraordinary for an interpreted language is because a Java architecture is also designed to reduce the overheads during any runtime because an incorporation of an multi-threading it improves the execution speed of a program. So that property we can call it as a high performance. The last feature it is a dynamic and also extensible. A Java is also an dynamic language because Java it is a capable of dynamically linking the new classes and the new libraries and methods and also the objects. The Java programming it support the sum of the functions written in other languages like C and also the C++ known as the native methods. So this is we can call it as a extensible so that the Java it has a two features like dynamic and also the extensible. So these are all the sum of the features of an the Java like compiled and interpreted, platform independent and portable, object oriented, robust and secure, distributed, small and simple, multi-threaded and interactive, high performance and dynamic and extensible. We move on to the next slide. Java differs from C. How the Java is differs from C? It has a, the sum of the different points regarding this how Java is differ from the C programming language. The first point is that Java does not include C unique statements keywords like size of and also type def. But a C programming it includes these type of any keywords like size of and type type. But a Java, it does not include this type of a unique statement. Then second point is that Java does not contain the data types like struct and also union. But a C programming, it has an a two data types like struct and also union. For the struct keyword is used for defining the structures. Union keyword is used for defining the unions. Third difference is Java does not define the type modifiers like auto, extrude, register, signed and unsigned. But a C programming, it defines the sum of the type modifiers like auto, extrude, register, signed and also unsigned. Then the next difference is Java does not support explicit pointer type. but C programming, it supports the explicit pointer type. Then go to the next point. Java does not have any preprocessors like an ash define, ash include, ash def, etc. But a C programming, it uses the include statements like an the preprocessor statements. Java does not have any preprocessor statements rather than using the preprocessor statement here. Java used the some of the import statements. Then go to the next statement. Java requires that the functions with no argument must be declared within a empty parenthesis and not with the void keyword as done in the C programming. But C programming, the sum of the functions with the argument and must be declared within a parenthesis and here with the key with the word keyword is also used in C programming. The next difference is that Java adds a new operators like these two operators instances of and that one. But a C programming, it does not add any new operators like these two. 
The last difference is Java adds the labeled break and also continuous statement. But C programming, it is used only a break and also the continuous statement. So these are all the some of the points regarding how the Java is different from C programming language. Then go to the next slide. Java differs from C++. That means the comparison in Java and also the C++. So these are all the some of the differences between the Java and also the C++. First point is that Java is truly object oriented programming language. C++ is basically C with object oriented programming language. So Java, it is a truly object oriented programming. It has a, some of the basic concepts like object class, encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance, polymorphism, etc. C++, it is a basically with the C programming and also with the some of the object oriented concepts. So it is called as partially object oriented concept. Second difference, Java does not support operator overloading concept. But C++, it support the operator overloading concept in the polymorphism. Third difference, Java supports labeled with loops and also statement blocks. But C++, it supports the go-to statements. Then the fourth point, in the Java, Java is compiled into the bytecode for a Java virtual machine and the source code is it is independent on the operating system. And that's the case of C++. This source code it can be written in written to be on a platform independent and it is written to take an advantages of a platform C++. It is typically compiled into the machine code instructions so normally it is that in the java is compiled into a bytecode then it is bytecode into a machine code but in the c++ it is directly is transferred from the high level language to a machine level language the sixth difference is that java does not support multiple inheritance of a classes but it support the interfaces as in the case of the C++, it support the multiple inheritance classes. Seventh difference is that Java does not support a global variables, so that every variable it should be declared within a class only. But as in the case of C++, it supports the global variable. So we all know about what is a local variable and what is a global variable. Local variable which means the variables which are declared within a, the function or within a main function that we can call it as a local variable. Glo global variable which means that the variables which are declared outside the main function that we can call it as a global variable so that Java does not support a global variable. C++ it supports the global variable. Then a difference is that Java does not use a pointer but as in the case of the C++ it supports the C pointer concept. So pointer means that pointer is a variable which stores the address of an, the another variable. Once again, I'll repeat. Pointer is a variable which stores the address of another variable. So that C++ it uses the pointer concept. Ninth difference. In the Java, it strictly enforces an object oriented paradigm means that the java it strictly enforces an object oriented programming concept like encapsulation abstraction inheritance polymorphism dynamic binding message passing but as in the case of a c++ it allows both procedural programming and also the object oriented programming concept the last difference is that in the java there are no header files in java but in the c++ we have to use header files in java sorry header files in c++ like ash include istream.h ash include cornea.h ash include stdlib.h etc so these are all the sum of the differences between java and also the c++
that means how a java is differ from c++ so thank you